So, Sean O'Malley will finally have a crack at the Bantamweight title after defeating Piotr Jan in a close contest against the reigning defending champion Aljamain Sterling. I like Aljo, I think he's a great fighter. I'm not like one of these MMA fans that would comment clown emojis under his social media posts and discredit him as a fighter. However, I love Suga. O'Malley is one of my favorite fighters in the UFC. I admire his striking style. It's beautiful to watch him work out there along with his brand outside of the UFC, which he's been doing a great job building. Ever since I became a Suga fan, I've been dying to see him get an opportunity like this. He's no doubt the biggest draw out of everybody in the Bantamweight division, and there's no one better that the UFC would want as a champion. Sean looks at this sport like no other fighter. He treats it as a business. When he was fighting unranked opponents, he was building his name as a fighter with these highlight reel KOs. Guys that weren't on his level, but he was starching everybody. But that served him in the right direction because eventually, he was so marketable to the point where that earned him a shot against Piotr Jan and he was able to leap the division. Mans was able to skip all of the side quests to get to the final boss. And Aljamain Sterling on the other hand is pretty much probably almost the opposite of Sean O'Malley. He's not nearly as big of a star as O'Malley, he's more hated and less exciting than O'Malley. But yet he finds a way to get it done against all these top guys. His title reign as a champion has been great despite what you think about him. There's a reason why people are seriously debating that he will be the Bantamweight GOAT if he wins this fight. Some people already think that he's there. People believe he'll walk right through O'Malley, but will he? Let's take a closer look at the matchup between the rainbow hair stick figure and the Oscar Grammy Award winner. Okay, so real quick, let's briefly break down both fighters and their strengths as a fighter. O'Malley has said in an interview that he sees it as a life or death situation if Aljo is able to grab a hold of him. And he's right. If that happens, it will be troubling for him. The path to victory for Shuga is no doubt going to be the striking. That is his bread and butter and he's better in that department against Aljo. The fight also starts standing as well. O'Malley is who I would classify as a sniper. He has that lanky build for fighting. He's very big for the Bantamweight weight class. He's 6 foot with a 72 inch reach. When you hear stats like that, you would think, oh, he's a lightweight, or he's probably a welterweight. But no, this guy is a bantamweight. And it's not that he's just big. Anybody can be lanky and still be trash. Sean O'Malley knows how to use all of his reach. He knows how to fight according to his body type. A lot of guys that are built long and lanky end up fighting like they're 4 foot 2. His distance management is good, his footwork is an asset, and something that people don't talk about a lot is his feint. A good way to tell whether or not someone is a good striker is whether or not they choose to feint. There's no reason why a fighter shouldn't feint, and as an elite striker, it's even more important. Sean does a good job of feinting with his lead hand, feinting with his hip, lifting his back leg, stepping low. All of this helps set up most of his attack. Attacks. And there's no doubt that his craftiness and his slickness as a fighter is something to behold. He's always presenting different looks, he's constantly switching stances, he's throwing a variety of attacks like long straight punches, quick one-twos, teak kicks, high kicks, flying knees, spin kicks, etc. And if we look at Aljamain Sterling, the first thing that I think we need to look about is obviously his frame and his size. Aljamain Sterling is big for this weight class as he walks around pretty heavy. I think he walks around like 165, 170, which is, again, big for Bantam weight. And he has to cut a lot of weight to make 135. But if you pair that up with his grappling prowess, that certainly gives him a big advantage against other fighters in this weight class. He's also called the Funk Master for a reason. He's pretty awkward as a fighter, but it makes him effective as well. His base is wrestling, but you can pretty much label him as a freestyle fighter as well. He's throwing shots from weird angles that catch people because they don't see it, ducks his head a lot when he fights and he likes to switch stances as well. Not to mention he also has good kicks. He finds a lot of success with them against guys like Piotr Jan, Henry Cejudo, and much more. We obviously know about the ground control, specifically the back. Aljo has a really high finishing rate when it comes to the rear naked choke. It's essentially his signature move. And his cardio is something that people do not talk about enough. Being a champion and being conditioned to fight five rounds is not easy. And especially to fight at a certain pace is not easy. But Aljo, he has that ability. He has the ability to shoot 20, 30, or 40 takedowns if he has to. All right, so now. Now let's immediately switch over to the keys to victories for both men. Let's start with Sean O'Malley. For Sugar to win this fight, I believe it's composure throughout the fight. He knows what he has to do in order to win. He has to keep the fight standing. It's that simple. If it ends up being a kickboxing fight, I believe most would favor O'Malley, rightfully so. But Aljo is not dumb. He's not going in there to try to play O'Malley's game. He's going to pressure O'Malley up against the cage and grab a hold of him early. Sugar's job now is to stay calm and relaxed. 
if he panics and throws a strike that he doesn't want to throw and it gives Aljo an opportunity to shoot and even worse if he takes the back GG's everybody it's done not to mention this is O'Malley's first main event and first five round fight and to quote the song if you are who you say you are a superstar then have no fear because the camera's here. Sean O'Malley has to be a superstar under the bright lights for him to win this fight. Secondly, use your feints to draw reactions. I believe this would be so critical and so crucial for Sean O'Malley. Aljo has great wrestling intensity because of his cardio, and it's certainly great that he can shoot a great amount of takedowns if he needs to, but the issue here is that he has a lot of difficulty setting up and disguising his takedown entries. If you pay attention to Aljo's second fight against Piotr Jan and his last fight against Henry Cejudo, there were times where he was in punching range or in kicking range and he literally just level changed and shot for an entry with no setup. You can't telegraph your shot like that because whether or not they can actually stuff your takedown, it's a guarantee that they're able to read it. And Aljo does it a lot. It's not like he's just doing it once. Aljo could deny it and say that it's because he's trying to stop the forward aggression, but I don't fully buy into that. So now what Sean needs to do is use his feints to draw Aljo in certain positions. For an example, if he can get Aljo to duck his head down, then he's in line for a knee. If Aljo is leaning his head towards one side, then he's susceptible to a kick. Marlon Marais was actually the first person to finish Aljo out cold, and he pulled it off with a knee years ago and Sean is certainly capable of it. Thirdly, Sean needs to use his lateral movement. He needs to stay away from the cage. Use your footwork to avoid being a stationary target. Against Piotr Jan, Jan was able to get a lot of takedowns against O'Malley up against the cage and Jan isn't even a great offensive wrestler so that is concerning. But offensively, Sean O'Malley can use his lateral movement to get off the line, change angle, and attack. Circle around the cage but also punch as you're circling so your opponent can't easily cut you off. If you remember, he did that very well against Piotr Jan. Once you're able to move, reset to the center of the octagon because that's where you need the fight to be. Fourthly, shot selection. Do not throw unnecessary strikes and leave yourself open for takedowns or potentially gassing yourself out. If his hands are high, stab the body with kicks or chop the legs. If his hands are low, step low and come over the top. If he's roaming around on the outside, Throw your teak kicks or set up high kicks. Make the right read so you don't end up in bad positions. At times, O'Malley could get overzealous to land a long straight punch down the pipe, and because his opponent could see it coming, it could put him in bad positions to get taken down. He has to stay patient and make few mistakes. Lastly, this is MMA. O'Malley is not going to be perfect. He'll most likely get taken down at least once in this fight, maybe more. But what he has to do is fight from the bottom. Throw elbows and be relentless, but not reckless. Do not be content with having him hold you down and piling up control time. O'Malley showed a ton of urgency against Piotr Jan to get back up to his feet and threatened with a ton of submission attempts as well. The wrist control was brilliant and use your long legs to prevent Aljo from advancing. But he's gotta be careful giving up his back up against the fence though. For Aljamain Sterling to win the fight, he has to obviously use that grappling. But we already know that. What he actually has to do is set up his entries better. Because he could run into something up the middle or down the pipe if he's not careful. There are times where Aljamain Sterling could walk into range. O'Malley is the bigger guy here, he's the longer guy. O'Malley has long legs as well, he could catch him. Aljo's got a feint or land with the hands just like how Piotr Jan did when he rocked him and at that point, you can get your hands locked around him and drag him to the mat. If Aljo is throwing knee strikes or elbow strikes from kicking range to try to close distance and set up takedowns, O'Malley is going to snipe him down the line, remember that. This is what he has to do if he wants to land takedowns in the center of the octagon. Secondly. Aljo has to cut off the cage and inflict pressure on the feet to get O'Malley where he wants him to be, which is up against the fence. O'Malley was pretty exhausted from wrestling against Piotr Jan in a 3 round fight. If Aljo can outwork him with the wrestling and drain that gas tank round by round, then slowly O'Malley's output will decrease and the striking becomes less dangerous. Thirdly, I think not only does Aljo have to wrestle consistently, but he also has to be the more active fighter for certain exchanges. O'Malley is much more skilled and talented on the feet. If Aljo is trying to go strike for strike or point for point with O'Malley, then I don't believe he's going to win or he won't dominate in the way that he wants to. If Aljo can use kicks to close distance and then put together punches and land, it will be much easier for him to blend in the wrestling as opposed to him failing on his striking attempts. He's not going to get O'Malley up against the fence if he can't land with the hands. But if he does, then this will put O'Malley up against the fence much easier. Fourthly, do not react to too many feints. If that happens, the pace will slow down. O'Malley will control the fight because he's resetting Aljo every single 
time, and Aljo won't be able to execute his game plan properly. The slower the pace, the more it favors O'Malley in my opinion because he's more selective. When the pace is quick, that's where Aljo can create chaos and wear down O'Malley. He can't react or be hesitant in that boxing or kicking range. Lastly, Aljo needs to fight to finish. In his fights against Jan and Cejudo, it looked like Aljo was coasting towards the end of the fight. It seems like he senses whether he's indeed up on the scorecards or not. However, you can't do that against O'Malley. He has shown that he's not just a pretty boy who's not willing to get down and gritty. He did it against Piotr Jan. He showed that he belonged. He's capable of digging deep. And if you consider that the UFC would love to have O'Malley as the champ, if the fight's close, you know who they're going to favor to win the fight. So don't anticipate the finish line, sprint through it. So for my official prediction, I'm going to take O'Malley by stoppage in round 3. A lot of you are probably clowning my pick right now, but let me explain. Aljo is definitely the favorite and the safe pick. However, Shuga is one of my favorite fighters, so I'm backing him for the sake of being a fan. But also, I think he can truly win this fight. I believe he's going to present a look where Aljo has not seen. Aljo hasn't fought too many guys that are taller and lankier that have the striking ability of O'Malley. On top of that, O'Malley has good grappling but obviously not better than Aljo, but it's enough for him to not get dominated if he's fighting to win. Aljo has beaten many great fighters, but it's not like he's outclassing these guys. He's beating them by inches to the finish line. My point is, he can be beatable and O'Malley can find the same success that his previous opponents have found on the feet. I think Aljo is going to start fast and I believe that O'Malley will be able to weather the storm. I think he's going to be able to survive, I think he's going to land on the feet, and I think Aljo will have a harder time dealing with the reach than he initially thought so. Piotr Jan actually had a very hard time figuring out the reach disadvantage between him and O'Malley. You can see there were times where Piotr Jan would pull out with the long guard and he would get caught on the way out, and that could happen with Aljo. Sugar's got a good corner around him. Tim Welch is his head coach and I believe he's super underrated as a coach. He has an amazing mind for MMA. Augusto Mendez is O'Malley's grappling coach and he's fantastic as well. I believe that Suga has prepared for everything that will come on fight night. Him and his team have done their homework and I believe that they have a good game plan heading into the fight. And besides, it's never fun if you take the safe route all the time in combat sports. Combat sports is exciting because of the element of surprise and who can guarantee that it won't happen this weekend. And that is it guys, thank you guys so much for listening to what I have to say and let me know, who do you have winning this Saturday, Sugar Sean O'Malley or the Funk Master Aljamain Sterling? Drop a comment and let me know in the comment section down below. Now if you guys enjoy content that is related to combat sports, please drop a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel down below, that would be greatly appreciated. Please follow my Twitter, I post a lot of tweets about my opinions and my rants about certain combat sports, so if you want to hear my takes on certain Certain fights, please head over to my Twitter and check it out. And other than that, it's been Steven signing out. Peace.